Charles Massey of Stone Dance rules from their seat of Stone Dance on Massey's Hook in the Crown Lands. They blazon their arms with a triple spiral, red, green, and blue, on a white background, an ancient sigil for an ancient house dating back prior to the coming of the Andals into the era of the First Men and the hundreds of petty kingdoms that made up Westeros. During this turbulent era, borders shifted as the winds blew. The Lords of House Massey at one stage were vassals to the Storm Kings of House Durandin during the reign of Durin the Ravenfriend. They eventually broke away from the realm of the Storm Kings during the later reign of Durwald the Fat. Given their location, like many houses that are situated near the mouth of the Blackwater Rush, House Massey have historically claimed parts of it as their land. Eventually, House Massey returned to the dominion of Storm's End when King Carlton II captured Stone Dance after besieging the castle for over a year, slaying the self-styled petty king Joshua Massey. But within two years, Joshua's daughter married an Andal warlord named Targaryen Bar Emmon, who expelled the Stormlanders from Stone Dance and replaced them with his new wife's brother, the late Joshua's son. After many years of fighting, the Andals and the First Men eventually found peace with the sons and daughters of House Massey marrying into the Durandan line several times. Prior to Egon's conquest, House Massey was sworn to House Durandan of Storm's End, given their historical connection. But in truth, they had closer ties with House Targaryen of nearby Dragonstone. When Egon the Conqueror launched his invasion of Westeros, the Massey supported him instead of the Storm King, Argilac the Arrogant meaning House Massey were among the houses rewarded greatly for their support in the conquest. In fact, when King Egon created the first proto-small council, his master of law was Tristan Massey. With the creation of the crown lands after the conquest, the Masseys became sworn to House Targaryen of Egon's new capital, King's Landing, instead of the new House Baratheon of Storm's End, who had replaced the Durandans. At the death of King Aenys Targaryen in 42 AC, and when his younger brother, King Maegor, usurped the throne from the rightful king, Lord Lucifer Massey was present at Visenya's Hill in King's Landing when King Maegor was challenged by Sir Daemon Morrigan, Grand Captain of the Warrior's Sons, to a trial of seven. He initially kept himself quiet when Maegor called for those who would stand beside him, but he was shamed by the example of a common man named Dick Bean, who volunteered himself nothing but a simple man-at-arms. With the appeal of Sir Bernard Brune, he became one of the king's champions. According to several telling of the trial by seven, Lord Lucifer hacked off an arm of Sir Harris Horp, one of the warrior's sons. However, another telling suggests that Massey was killed by Horp after Horp tossed his battle axe into the other hand and buried it between Lord Massey's eyes. During the Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of the Dragons, House Massey supported Rhaenyra Targaryen's black faction. During the sowing of the dragon seeds in 129 AC, Lord Gorman Massey was killed attempting to tame a dragon, Vermithor on Dragonstone. At the death of Rhaenyra in 130 AC, at the end of the war, at the hands of her half-brother, King Aegon II, Alinda Massey, who was at the time a lady-in-waiting for Rhaenyra, reportedly gouged out her own eyes at the sight of her queen being devoured by the king's dragon, Sunfire. Along with Rhaenyra's other ladies-in-waiting, she was placed in a cell in the Sea Dragon Tower to await ransom. During the reign of King Aegon III Targaryen, in the years 132-133 to AC, after the death of many Kingsguard knights during the Winter Fever, the boy King Aegon III appointed Sir Robin Massey to the King Guard and made him the Lord Commander. However, Robin was soon dismissed afterwards by Lord Unwin Peak, one of the regents of the king, as the Council of Regents had not been consulted on the matter. Later, Robin was killed in a quarrel by the captain of Unwin Peak's personal guard, Tassario. Unwin Peak was also the cause of the rumours spread to defame Eleanor Massey, a possible marriage candidate for the king, in the hopes his own daughter would be chosen. In the year 212 AC, men from House Massey were part of the force under the command of the Hand of the King, Brendan Rivers, known better to the histories as Bloodraven, when he marched on White Walls in the Riverlands to put down the Second Blackfyre Rebellion before it truly had a chance to begin. During Robert Baratheon's rebellion in the year 282 AC, it is unclear what House Massey's position was. However, given the historic support of House Targaryen, some have put forward they remained loyal to the Iron Throne, while others suggest the lack of historical account of House Massey's role suggests they perhaps chose to stay neutral in the conflict. 
House Massey seems to play a smaller role during the Baratheon era of Westeros, but we do know that during the Hand's tourney to celebrate Lord Eddard Stark becoming Hand of the King, among the knights gathered there to compete was at least one Massey knight, with the arms of House Massey spotted amongst the crowds. In the third book, A Storm of Swords, we learn that Wallace Massey, who is a steward of the Night's Watch, and is squire to Sir Dennis Malister, the commander of the Shadow Tower. House Massey plays a much bigger role in the fifth book, A Dance with Dragons, with Sir Justin Massey, who is an advisor to Stannis Baratheon, and frequently sits on his councils. After Stannis travels to the Wall, Sir Justin is sent south from Castle Black by Stannis, along with Richard Horp. Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, Jon Snow, deduces that Justin is acting as an envoy for Stannis. Upon his return, Justin argues with Jon about the likely length of Ruth Bolton's siege of Moat Kaelin, believing the Ironborn will hold out for a longer period, and thus Justin counsels Stannis to strike against the Dreadfort. Stannis believes that Justin aspires to be rewarded with the Lordship of Winterfell for his service, but the King plans to give the title to Arnulf Karstark. Stannis also believes that Justin hopes to marry the wildling princess Val. When Stannis captures Asha Greyjoy and defeats her Ironborn in the fight by Deepwood Mott, Justin reluctantly follows Stannis towards Winterfell, fearing the long march and the prospect of a siege in the snow. He commands the baggage train and is concerned about the scarcity of provisions. He believes that Melisandre brings good fortune to Stannis and wishes that she was with the host instead of at the wall, but he is less devout than some of the Queen's men. He warns Asha Greyjoy, and the others begin to talk of making sacrifices to Rylor to end the snowstorms that plague the march on Winterfell. Justin's baggage train suffers heavy losses, with horses foundering and exhausted men sitting to die in the snow. He removes Asher's fetters on the 20th day of the march. When Melisandre prophesies a girl coming to the wall, Jon guesses she's Arya Stark and fears that Stannis will try to marry her to Justin. The girl in fact turns out to be Alice Karstark and Jon arranges a marriage for her to Sigorn of the Thens. Justin is courteous to Asher, bringing her food, wine and company. Asher thinks he wishes to marry her claim her lands, seat her on the sea stone chair, and rule through her as her lord and master, since he has lost his own lands through supporting Stannis. Asha believes her defeat at the King's Moot by her uncle, Euron Greyjoy, and her defeat at Deepwood Mott by Stannis, has lessened her in the eyes of the Ironborn, however. She does not deflate Justin's hopes, but does not see him as a strong prospect. Justin intervenes where Sir Clayton Sug manhandles Asha and threatens to have her burned at the stake at the crofters village. When they eat together in the long hall, Justin argues they should remain camped instead of pressing on to Winterfell. He leaves the dinner when Richard accuses him of cowardice and questions his faith in Rylor. During the Winds of Winter sample chapters that are currently subject to change, Stannis orders Sir Justin, the representative of the Iron Bank, Tycho Nestoris, back to Bravos. But Justin is to first escort Arya Stark safely to her brother, Jon Snow at the Wall. He is accompanied by Alysanne Mormont and the brothers of the Night's Watch who escorted Tycho south from the Wall. Once in Bravos, he will use Stannis' newly acquired wealth from the Iron Bank of Bravos to hire at least 20,000 cell swords, plus the ships needed to bring them back across the narrow sea. Stannis tasks Justin to return with the cell swords, even if he falls in battle, and fight the war in the name of his daughter. Shirin Baratheon. Justin protests that his place is by Stannis' side if there is to be a battle, but Stannis says that he is better suited as an envoy than a warrior. When Justin counsels Stannis to undertake the journey himself and raise an army like Sir Aegor Rivers did at the Red Grass Field, the angry Stannis is reminded of Justin's counsel to flee the Blackwater. Before leaving, Justin appeals to Stannis for a lordship to improve his standing as an envoy. He asks Stannis to send Asha with him, still pursuing a marriage with her. Stannis too refuses to allow this, but he may be rewarded with the marriage on his return, and until we get the Winds of Winter, that is all we currently know of House Massey.